We are back, everybody. It's your girl, Lauren Reed, right here on What A Ice Radio. Yeah. Jay has everybody in the room right now rocking the Master P. Nice throwbacks, man. You got some good stuff. <laughs> I'm not bad at you. You got some good stuff, yeah, and I want to awesome. hate on you. Good job. I, you know, I, I didn't know what to put. Uh, now I saw you, I was like, you know what? She got all Philly. I'm going to keep it all Texas. Um, so I try, or at least all South. So. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, remember, guys, everything tonight, all songs are songs that make you feel like you're at home. And why is that? Because that brings us into our guest tonight on Learn Read. Let's talk about the topic of the hour. We have Mr. Patrick June here. He is a real estate developer, and he is here to talk about you know everything that he has going on. He's going to answer some questions for us. Um, and we, I actually have a lot of questions in regards to like home ownership and things of that nature. Word. So we're going to jump into that first. But first, thank you for coming to What I Ready on the Learn Read Live Show. How are you this evening? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Oh, of course. You in the building? It just always happens. Um, no <laughs> right one, after homecoming is a great time. Yeah. No one from my we, we, comes We've had a lot of guests come on, and yeah. a lot of them are from Temple. So that's well, why. Well, it's local. Yeah, but we're doing it though. Temple, but y'all do Temple's from, heavy now. Yeah. Temple is very heavy. I, I'll give y'all that. Y'all are extremely heavy. Um, but really quick before we jump into the interview, I just yeah. promised that I would remember to say this. Yes. Everyone, it is October, so you know what time it is. It is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Yes. And I have to shout out my beautiful and wonderful mother. My boo. See, you always gotta <laughs> to go extra. It is not necessary, right? What up, Miss Lorna? She is a three-year breast cancer survivor. That's what's up. So this month we always, you know, salute her and all, all of our, you know, breast cancer survivors and even some of the people that we've lost. Due to the fight, ladies, make sure you are out there getting your mammograms done, also doing your self examinations. Yes. Um, breast cancer is real. Um, also, we have a lot of young uh, African American and women of color that are being diagnosed with this disease as well. So, take care of yourselves and make sure you guys are getting your checkups. But, Mama, I love you. Word. And happy three years. Love you too. Do you ever stop? <laughs> That's from that's like that was like a term that was like endearment though. I wasn't like trying to Oh alright, just like, making sure. Morning. But Beck She knows she, she knows she loves me too, so, so. she does. She really does. It's sad. But <laughs> she always ends up like adding more people to the family. <laughs> yeah, that's what's up. You and Jay okay? Yeah. Go on some food. Yeah. No, mom, chill. She be the one that invite me to the pit to the cookout. The cookout so that's why it's all that. That's not like. true. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> back to our guest, you guys. I had to do that quick shout out. Mr. Patrick Jr., he's here. We thank you again for coming up on What Are Eyes Radio. Yeah. But let's start the interview off. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started into the real estate development game. Okay. So to start, my name is Patrick Jr. I'm from West Philadelphia. I'm a real estate developer, investor, entrepreneur. I'm also a Temple graduate. I got started in real estate, you know, back when I was in Temple. I saw that on your bio, your sophomore year, correct? My sophomore year, how yes. I got started. So, um, how I got started exactly my sophomore year was basically, you know, we were, uh, I was living with my roommates and we were living in off-campus housing. They were paying 2000 a month. Ooh. And I was basically like, yeah. Where? Yeah. <laughs> like, how are we coming up with this money? So I was like, you know, this guy who we're paying, obviously is making some money. Correct. Right. So I was like, you know what, I need to get into this because this guy's making a lot of money here. So. The following year, I purchased my first property around Temple University. Wow, okay. Right, so what were about? Uh, it was right off of Broad in York. Okay. Oh, yeah, right, okay. Yeah, right off of Broad in York. Around, around what time? Like, the year? This was 2010. Okay. All right, it was starting, okay. Yeah, around 2010, I bought that property. Um, I, I ended up fixing the property and then renting it for the 2000 a month. The same 2000 a month that we were paying, I ended up renting it for the same amount. Yeah. And I rented it to my friends too. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Savage. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, and then the ball just started rolling from there. Yeah. I mean, that first property just put me in position to, you know, continue investing and buying more property and just building up that way. I mean, you say 2000 a month, but like how many people were living in the house? Uh, it was uh, four people. Yeah, alright, that's not bad. Yeah, yeah that four people sense. living in the house. Yeah, that, that adds up. I mean, but they're college students too. College students, you know, that's true. Like, going to school, going to class, like, how are we gonna come up with this money? Right, I can't even eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. That's a huge step to make in uh, your college years. You know, you're already at school studying and stuff like that. Um, 
was it just because you know you were trying to figure out how you were going to pay your actual rent to actually come up with another way i mean that's but you were you scared to make that leap because you know, home ownership, owning a piece of property is not easy. You had to fix it up, all that other stuff, correct. And you just said like you bought it while you're still in school and you were having trouble trying to pay your rent. So like right. I'm trying to figure out like how that all that happened. Right. So basically, uh, so a little backstory, like while I was in college, I was throwing house parties. Okay. So I basically lived in that house that we were paying 2000 a month. My purpose mm -hmm. was the parties in the house. Like it was like one of the new developments had a semi-finished basement, yeah. concrete walls. Like we were going- Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, the, the exposed right. brick. Right. right, so I was just saving. Once I realized, you know, how me and my roommates were trying to put it together to pay the rent, mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I need to start saving this money. Yeah. Like I want to get in real estate. Like this guy's making some money. Right. So I just started saving and I also like started pitching an idea to my mom and she got involved and she was like, you know what, I see this. Like, I want you to do this. Like, okay. let's make it happen. Right. And that's how I was able to make it happen while I was still in school. That's dope. Did you always want an area around, you know, where you went to school? Or did you kind of like try to branch off into other areas like where you're from, different things of that nature? Right. So uh, I wanted to start around Temple because that's where that first spark really came from. Okay. And like I could kind of see the money and I knew the market too. Mm -hmm. So even while I was there, so a step that I took before I even really got into it was um, my landlord to ask him could I start leasing out his apartments. Mm -hmm. So I know how to lease. So okay. I learned from him how to lease. So I'm like, you know, if I buy a property, I'll get it rented, no problem. Right. But I didn't know how to fix it. Mm -hmm. So that's when the trouble came in. So that was kind of sparking motivation. So I'm saving, you know, the money from leasing apartments, I'm saving the money from the parties. And I'm like, all right, boom, now I got a property. Now mm -hmm. we got to figure it out. Were you doing your own renovations or were you, um, were you having someone come in and do them? So, I'm running the same system even to this day. So I have people come in and do it. So I basically manage it, oversee everything. I hire a contractor, sell everything out. Mm -hmm. And they come in and renovate the properties or, you know, build them to, you know, basically how I lay it out. Or mm -hmm. if it's like new development, more so like to the specs of the architect and things like that. Gotcha. Like, I, yeah, I mean, I feel like, I mean, I feel like that was the, the move to do it anyways because nowadays Temple's buying up all this property. All right. All right. <laughs> you still own that property? Nah, I sold it. Oh, okay. I sold it. <laughs> it's so bad. It's bad. Yeah, actually, the house is right now is an Airbnb house. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so he's like rented out per bed, Airbnb, and things like that. Yeah, yeah but I, I, actually, I left Temple right after that. <coughs> oh, really? Yeah, I didn't stay around Temple. It's like, as I was coming out, you know, that time, mm -hmm. it was like, that's when it was really developing mm -hmm. coming up. And the market just got so saturated within yeah. like a year or two. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's like I was renting out to my friends, no problem, two thousand a month. And then like by year two, it started getting tough. Right. And I was like, okay, I started switching up the strategy real quick. And then that's when I went straight to flipping. Mm. Mm. So my next question for you was going to be: Are you interested in going back into that neighborhood? Especially since right now it's kind of like I have a family member who has lived in Yorktown, basically. Right. Before I was alive, basically my great aunt, she owns a property there, and you wouldn't, can, you can only imagine how many times she gets someone coming to her doorstep. Right, right, right. Um, we'll buy this today right, for right, this for amount of money. money, and she refuses to. I'm going nowhere. I'm not going nowhere. Yeah. Shout out to Aunt Val. She's not going nowhere, <laughs> right? Before I and yeah, right. The the piece of property will probably end up, you know, going to her daughter. You know, it'll be right. in the family, right? Right, right, right? If we decide to do something with it, that will be different. Then but she. Well, but decide. she's not going, but she's not going anywhere. But do you still see that that, that you know, that area is up and coming? Like, would you go back, would you invest back into the area? Um, yeah, I would invest back into the area. I think Temple is doing a great job at developing the area surrounding the school. Um, they're growing, you know, north of Broad Street and also south of Broad Street. So, mm -hmm. you know, as they continue to spend, the area is going to change, property value is going to go up. Mm -hmm. You know, I would definitely go back around Temple, but you know, just not right now. So for the people who are you know, really up on all their real estate terminology, um, developer versus your normal real estate agent, what's the difference? Okay, uh, that's actually a great question. Oh, thank you. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, I'll throw in another one in there too, to like a flipper. Okay. So I'll do the real estate agent, the developer, developer and then the developer. Okay. okay. So a real estate agent is someone who works with a brokerage whose job is to basically uh, sell a property for a developer, or sell a property for an investor, or sell a property for an investor. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, a flipper. Mm -hmm. And they're very educated in the real estate realm, so they can most likely help you get into that home. 
you know, they'll be the ones that'll help you, you know, put you in connection with the mortgage company or mm -hmm. tell you, you know what areas you know you should be buying in and you know help you and guide you through purchasing that home, whether it's your first home, second home, third home, it don't matter. Is that what you are supposed? Uh, agent. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right, that makes sense. All right, a flipper is somebody who goes in, you know, finds a shell or an abandoned property, they renovate it, and so <laughs> They do like all the hard labor and basically right, things okay. like that. So, uh, and a developer, I mean, they, some, some, and a flipper could do hard labor, but yeah, they, but they are also contract it out at the same time. Got it. Okay. A developer is more so working with architects, working with engineers, you know, working with surveyors, you yeah. know, actually, you know, designing the property. Putting, Getting your hands dirty. Yeah. <laughs> you know, being a little bit more creative, picking out the finishes, getting into the details, mm -hmm. and actually planning like years in advance on what you think should be put into this area. Okay. You know, thinking more outside of for profit. Like, I'm going to flip this property, get profit. It's kind of like I'm going to buy on this street, put, you know, X amount of single families, and maybe I'll get a corner property and put like a coffee shop. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, maybe I'll build these up, put it at a certain price point, and these are, this is what I think the area, the direction is moving. Right. So that's more of a developer, flipper, and realtor. Nice. Yeah. Makes sense yeah, now, right? I, did now. Yeah. I didn't know the difference, so that's why I had to put the question in. I'm like, Jay, he said he's a developer. I was like, you know what that know is? Some of them. <laughs> 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 we just like to keep it real around here. That's why we wouldn't yeah. wait to ask him when he gets here. The creative here. process was probably where I would probably excel. You would want to do the creative yeah, process of it? Yeah, so I, I do like a lot of new construction. So nice. like I'm building property from the ground up. That's got to be fun. Yeah, and fun. tears. And exactly. Well, are you really building it or are you telling people what to do? Telling people what to do. There you go. <laughs> now we're talking. I'm all about telling people what Delegation. they're doing. And telling you. I mean, at the same time, I'm building it in a sense of, you know, I got to see it all the way through the finish line. Right. You know, you but it's also your vision, too, right. at the same time. Right. So. right. All right, so we're going to come right back. We have some more right. songs to make you feel like you're at home. Yep. But we have Mr. Patrick June here. He is a real estate developer, everybody. But he has knowledge in all areas. So when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about, you know, what he has going on, maybe some of the areas that you're doing some development in. Right. And also we have some questions in regards to home ownership and maybe development, owning developments as well. All right, guys, we are back and it's the Lauren Re Live. Let's talk about the topic of the hour. And we have real estate developer Patrick June here. And he is dropping gems on us about different things about, you know, the real estate industry. So we were just getting into the difference between a flipper, a developer, and an, ag an agent. So thank you for that information because we had no clue what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. But we did kind of talk behind the scenes in regards to the requirements for you to be able to do certain things. So um, is there any particular licenses that you have to have to be an agent or a developer or things of that nature? Right. So to be a real estate agent, you yes, actually do need a real estate license. Okay. Um, and the requirements for that is, you know, you can take uh, some courses, and then you have to take like a state exam. Mm -hmm. um, to be a developer, you don't need a license. Okay. To how, how? So how do you? How does one become one? You, like just, you just have ideas. Let me go find some land that you want to just build on. Like, you know, you know, a little dope right there. Like, yeah, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, it's a water park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to put all the pieces together. I mean, the best way to start would be to become a developer. I mean, start as a, an agent, why not? Mm -hmm. You know, they're like the most uh, knowledgeable source starting out. And you know, and they could put all those pieces together. I mean, they're dealing with developers, they're dealing with investors, they're dealing with flippers. You know, and the people. And the people. Yeah. So, you know, they'll have like all the skills and knowledge of, you know, bring it together. So, uh, I feel like everybody now is a flipper though. Like, everybody, like, oh, I flip houses. Like, okay. So, like, that doesn't mean. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, what does that mean? <laughs> right. But not only that, but that doesn't make, that doesn't mean you're good at it. Do you know what I mean? Like, so right. what do you believe makes you a good developer or a you know, what makes you better than every, anybody else out there that's doing it? What sets you apart from Yeah. That? Well, um, basically, I'm building all the properties and uh, I'm making them hot, just to be honest. Like, uh, you know, the, the style that I want to bring to the market is a uh, more high-end luxury style, mm -hmm. right? But it's just like, I'm not a 
super old corporate like developer. Okay. You know, so I'm building these homes as if I would live, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, I graduated Temple 2013. At this point, a lot of my friends are buying their first homes. Or so mm-hmm. they're, you know, on the verge of finding a companion where they can afford an even larger home. Shout out to them. Right. So, it's like, <laughs> so it's like, you know, I want Good for them. You know, I want to tailor that home to that, you know, particular buyer, whether it be someone who recently graduated and they're moving in with a friend, you know, and they right. want like a dope house where they can have parties and invite people over. Mm-hmm. And once somebody walks into that home, they're like, yo, this is the hottest house on the street or in right. the area. Take all my money. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so like, so, so you you talk about like how like you, you wouldn't mind like people like kids having parties and stuff like that's that's kind of interesting coming from someone who's actually trying to you know what I mean because like I don't you know, heard what you say he's the head of that house no I get that I get that but it's like I think I would think you know maybe it would it would change it's like nah it's my property you know what I mean because I know right, how I land I'm selling them right? right so it's just like Fair you enough. buy it and you throw a party and it has nothing to do with me it's kind of like so do you depending on what area you have your developments in. Um, does that depend on what the design that you're going to have? Because every the, the location may not be tailored to that college student or that person just coming out of college ready to buy a house. Right. It may be an older couple who you know maybe want to downsize, but so still want to divorce. Right, but still have kids. Right. Do you think about that when you go into different areas to to look at where you want to start to build? Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I do think about that as well. But you know, I'm more so going for like the modern style home. Okay. So, you know, all of my style, all of my homes are modern, they're very luxury. Um, so anybody could like move into that particular home, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I mean if it's a sing- if it's a family, I'm gonna give them three bedrooms because mm-hmm. I'm looking at it like, you know, they need an extra room for the kids mm-hmm. or maybe one room maybe a closet office and then, you know, a kids bedroom. But then like the starter homes that I do too, because I do a lot of like two bedroom, two and a half bed homes. Mm-hmm. You know, those homes it's like not not many families are moving into those type of homes. Right. So those are the ones like I'm making like super nice. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I want that first time home buyer to come in there and just be like, I need to show this off to my friends. Mm-hmm. Like look at this product I just purchased, like you need to be buying houses from Patrick. Like right. this is cool. You know? Totally agree with that. So I'm glad you kind of said first home buyer, because we did say we wanted to and throw some real estate education out there for the people who may be ready to jump in and buy their first home. Mm-hmm. Me. Um, mm-hmm. Yes, within the next year or so, I'm, I'm definitely going to look into buying my first home. So what are some of the things, that advice maybe, that you would give someone who is ready to buy their first home? For instance, um, what do you think their financials should look like? Um, you talked about like credit before yeah. things. What are those like tips that you could give someone looking to do that? All right. So uh, for someone who's looking to purchase their first home and they're trying to figure out how do I get into this first home, mm-hmm. I would say reach out to a realtor okay. or a mortgage broker. Okay. And, uh, and my personal advice would be get a pre-approval. Okay. Like you want to know what you can afford, what you can buy. Right. And if you're concerned about getting a pre-approval, well, just start by making sure your credit's together. Mm-hmm. You know, and some people have different, you know, opinions on where they think their credit score needs to be. Mm-hmm. And I think that's some of the misconceptions that people think you need like perfect credit. Right. You know, but something, and I'll just throw this out here, something that's always like a 600 can get you into a home, you know? Mm-hmm. So just maintaining that credit score, getting it to a good point, um, you know, making sure you have like proof of income, things like that. Mm-hmm. And then going out there and getting that pre-approval. And once you got that together, that will lead you into getting that first home. So if I'm looking for an agent, what are some good characteristics that I'm going to be looking for in someone that I want to go into to entrust in them and helping me get my first home? Because I don't know much about, you know, everything. So what kind of agent would I be looking for? Um, but, you know, that agent would have to fit, like, your style, your personality, your character. So more so just interviewing agents. Like, you can interview an agent like you interview somebody for a job, you know? Okay. So it's just like, you know, they come and talk, they have to give you the spill. So it's more so like you want the agent to come and tell you, you know, how exactly are you going to find this home for me? Right. Like, how are you going to work this out? Like, what's the steps on the forward? It's a lot of trust for me. You know? Yeah. Honestly. Like, how could you make this process easier on me? You know and it can be a long process, and correct? It can be a long process, but, I mean, by interviewing and finding that right agent, it can be a very short, easy process. Okay. You know? okay. So as long as you deal with somebody that, you know, understands what you want, knows where you want to be, is not trying to force you into the wrong situation, you know, you guys can kind of, like, relate. That's like a perfect situation to be in in order to purchase your first home. Mm-hmm. So I know there's like a lot of questions. I mean, I I actually had some questions that I asked someone 
before about home ownership. Um, there's a lot of grants out there for first home um, buyers, correct? Yeah. So your agent should be letting you know about those types of things, right? Right. If the well, we don't want to too much pressure on the agent. But, <laughs> you know, if they're edu educated in that sense, because grants are kind of hard to get. To, okay. You know? So it's just like having somebody who's well versed in getting grants would be you know an advantage, but. You know, if they don't know about all the grants out there, you know, we don't want to hold that against them. Right. Know. So, um... I was going to say, like, would, so is, would loans be a good way of, like, like a good way of, like, getting to the point where you need to start getting money for it? Like, right. would you recommend that? Or would, like a like a private loan? Or yeah. Like a mortgage? Well, uh, in or, yeah. I mean, what would, what would I would definitely, I would definitely recommend a mortgage. Okay. So... And if we're talking about first-time home buyers, then they have something out there called FHA, mm -hmm. which is designated and um, put together for first-time home buyers, would actually put you in a position to get into a property with you know the least amount of cash out of your pockets. You okay. Know? And you get an FHA mortgage for like three and a half percent down. You know, so it's like after you go through that pre-approval process, right, mm -hmm. and you figure out where you need to be or where you, what you get approved for, mm -hmm. then you can figure out that three and a half percent, right? You know? okay. And now you know how much money you need, where your credit score needs to be, and then that puts you in a position to get into that property. Mm -hmm. That seems similar, huh? Yeah, you should have <laughs> like, ah, I'm good. Doesn't I'm like, ah, cool? numbers, get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone says like pretty much when you start to the process of buying a house, everything else kind of like halts. So yeah, you know your spending is different. You should be saving to show that you have money in, in your bank account. Right. You shouldn't be going out and getting any additional credit at that time. Are all those things too? Are those the misconceptions? Um, or the the that depends on the person. I think it depends on the person. Yeah, you know because nah, your agent like, is saying no. It's true. <laughs> don't go out buying new cars. Don't do none of that. No. Don't go buying furniture. Say I'm about to get a house and go out. Each time you run your credit, you risk the chance of losing out on that mortgage. Okay. You up. So when you do go out and acquire that mortgage, it is good, like Patrick said, to talk to your mortgage provider because if you do go out and buy, start buying, you know, going crazy, spending it's like mm, it's, it's over for you. Yeah. You're starting out over from scratch again. You don't want to do that. Your debt to income ratio. Is what's the most important key, right? That's what I was about to ask about that. Um, yeah. Your debt rate. So, um, so, how long do you think, like, before? So, I'll give myself as an example, right? So, I'm ready to buy a house within the next year or so, but I need to purchase a car first before I, I do anything. Just, just how life it just worked itself out, right? So, within that time frame of me buying this new car that I'm about to get. Is it a time period that I should wait before I should then jump into looking to start buying a home? That's definitely a question you still want to ask. Okay. The mortgage provider. Okay. But after you purchase the car and you're making good good payments, you should be ready within the next three to six months, I think. Oh. And the car is actually good for your credit. You know? yeah, if you pay it all the time. So that's the biggest catch. So, you know, more so. And you don't really have to change your life too much. You just don't want to do anything drastic, you know, that could damage your credit or hurt you in purchasing at home, you know. You can still go out to dinner, you know, you right. can still go grocery shopping. All right. You know, but you might not want to take, if you're going to get like a mortgage on property, you might not want to go take out that personal loan just to go on vacation. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, now you got all this extra stuff. Or like he said, like, I'm about to get this house and go get all new furniture or go to Home Depot and start financing my yeah. appliances and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, Wait until after you sign that. on that line. Get the line. house first. Get the house first, get right? The house first. Yeah, fill it in. That definitely makes sense. So, so let's talk about some of the locations, if you don't mind, of where you said you're like in the Point Breeze area, yeah, you're developing right area. now. Nice. So um, do you mind talking about pricing, where you kind of like start your pricing for your for your those, I, don't, those, yeah. I, don't, I don't mind talking. So let the people know, like, what does it cost to get into one of your single-family homes in one okay. of areas? So right now, um, in South Philadelphia, the properties that I'm producing are at the top of the market. Okay. So um, I recently just got a contract on a property. And, um, I'm not trying to just throw it out there. Um, I just, I'm selling one now for like five seventy-five. Mm. So uh, and I'm also working on a new, new development. Me and Tad is actually working on it in uh, South Philly. It's called The Breeze. Mm -hmm. um, it's on 20th Street, uh, and this one is going to be one of those properties that we're you know telling to that new market. Mm -hmm. um, we're putting it uh, 
all, all minor finishes, uh, very luxury. And this one is going to be at uh, 500000 20th one. Starting. Starting at okay. 500000 You said 20th? Yeah, 20, like 20th Fantastic. Okay. Yeah, 20th Fantastic. Okay. So would you say that Philadelphia is changing over to being a higher luxury uh, real estate city? Um, yes. I would. I mean, clearly, in sense, you're... In a sense, <laughs> I would say really? <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, there's there's also there's other properties out there that's, you know, not at that price point, um, but that's just currently what I'm doing right now. And Correct. Stuff that. Okay. Right. I'm actually putting something together, not to change the subject too much, but we're, we're you know, trying to, we're putting up together like a, like a little series, should we call it, you know, we're calling it like Chasing the M. So basically we got... You know, that end was done for a million, correct? Correct. Okay. But basically, it's a, it's a set of properties, um, and the house sale is going to be basically a million. Okay. And it's basically us, uh, you know, going through the whole process and allowing you guys to see start to finish, you know, us breaking ground all the way to the finished product. Wow. And us even selling the property for 500000 having two going at the same time, which is the million, basically. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so that's what basically what we're doing in South Philly. But um, there's other people out there that are, you know, building these properties. They may not be as nice as us, and the price point may be lower. You know, mm -hmm. right. it's just kind of like the product that we are putting out there. This is the value that we bring to right. the market. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's dope. That's really really dope. I'm excited about the the series part because it'll kind of be like a, I don't want to say like flipping house, but you know, like all the different things that you see on like what H. Yeah, I feel like people just like to see a process. Let's see the process. Yeah. How, how, how they get that? Yeah. 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 reality the documentation. Like right. you know, I watch other reality shows like um, the real estate, uh, like New York City. Yeah, what was it? The real, the listing. Or the list, the real estate listing. Yeah. All those crazy, the million dollar listings, like yeah. all different cities. Like those are like yeah. ridiculous, crazy. I'm like I'm not there. Yeah, it is nice to look at. Yeah, you can dream. Sure, it's all good. All right, so we have a couple more songs, but when we come back, we want the people to know where they can find you. You know, if someone is looking right now and listening right now, uh, where, you know, they're looking for a place okay. and, you know, how they can reach out to you. I actually, I actually want to get some opinions. Oh. Of some different spaces and properties in play, just to see if you think. Well, Jay has. Yeah, I'm just curious to see, like, the, the aesthetic. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we'll do that when we come back. We have a couple more songs. These are all songs that make you feel like you're at home. Yeah. I had to do this. I, I would get my Philly car revoked if I didn't. Oh, yeah. Mr. Meek Mill with Dreams and Nightmares. I feel yeah, like if you don't really like know at least 70% of the words to this song, <clears throat> you really like not from the city. <laughs> yeah, I, I know like 40%. 40, well, you're not from Philly. Yeah. But I mean, so your, your, your loyalties are not really there. Yeah. I understand that. So how did it go when you was at Me in America? You oh no, I was, I was, I, you know, it, it was like, I was like recording a lot too. Like, and like, I, like the dude behind me was singing every single word, so I was getting a lot of his. Of his? Yeah, and it, like, it was so like crowded and, and crazy, like I was like shaking this. I stuff. saw the replay of it, and I was like, wow, that's a lot going it was, on right was, now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a lot, it's a lot. Seeing grown ass people run to that, that was crazy. Yeah. All right, so we got me like the Dream of Nightmares, and then we got Three Sick Mafia with Sippin'. No, <laughs> yeah, you still put it? I'm still going to play it. <laughs> we might get picked off the air, but I'm still going to play this. <laughs> All right, That's everybody, it's your fun. girl Lauren Reed right here on What Are Eyes Radio. Please don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Yeah, interesting. Good word. So you had some questions. No, I was just kind of curious, like, because I know there's a... Uh, there's a couple of buildings in the city that are, you know, getting their renovations. Like, I was thinking, have you seen, like, the, the Lime Rain? Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, they, they, I think they only have, like, the, the lobby. Yeah. Right? And I just wanted to get your thoughts on, like, yeah. what they're doing. Yeah, so I haven't actually gone inside, but I like the fact that they're restoring mm -hmm. the building and bringing back like the original like aesthetics of it, mm -hmm. and like the like the facade of it is still the same. Like they basically restored the entire building, mm -hmm. and I thought that was super dope. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's other stuff like that going on, even in Burytown. Yeah. You know, there I saw one pro uh, apartment building actually that mm -hmm. was like had a bunch of graffiti inside. Yeah. And it basically saved the graffiti and like just made it like a part of the wall. Mm -hmm. So it's like as you enter That's your like, apartment, you got all this graffiti in the wall, but it's like real hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, I like things like that. 
That's cool. What would you say like in Philly is like the next like neighborhood that's really like uh, coming here? Yeah, yeah. I, that's like yeah, everybody's always talking about this neighborhood, that neighborhood. So you mentioned Brewerytown. Like, yeah, that one blew up like right. the last couple of years. I mean, I, I would say Brewerytown is still now Brewerytown because yeah. there's still a lot of development that needs to be done. You know, there's still a lot of room to grow. There's still a lot of undeveloped land. Mm-hmm. There's still a lot of properties that are abandoned and needs to be rehabbed. So, mm-hmm. you know, I would, I guess, I would say Brewerytown. Okay. There you go. Nice. So where can people find you? Um, you got to do your own self-promoting right now. So are you on like Instagram, Facebook? Where's your website? Give us all that. Okay. So if you're looking for me, you can find me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is patrick.june. Mm-hmm. It's my first and last name. Um, I'm also on Facebook, Patrick June. Uh, my website is www.jpholdingsgroup.com. Okay. And um, those are the areas where you can find me. Cool. So definitely go check out the photo. Yes, yes. please so, do that. Yes. You can go to my Instagram and follow like my Insta Snap. You know, I do a lot of you know posting of my day to day. Like you can see the property, especially if you start following now, you'll see it from start to finish. Right. And like a lot of the finishes that I put into the properties and things like that. I'm excited to see the breeze. Yeah. How that how that finishes out. That it's thing. gonna be crazy. I, I promise. I promise it's gonna be better than every other property I did. Word. Now do you have like a rule of thumb? Like do you live in any of your developments? Yeah. Or are you, you okay? Yeah, I don't live in any. But you just pictured like how would I like my How would you know, like your place? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I see so many properties. I build so many properties. Mm. For me to build my own home right now would be unfair. Mm. You know, because I'm going to want to make it the best. I'm going to tie up a bunch of cats. Mm. It's like, I, you know, I just don't want to do that right now. Mm. And I want it to be almost perfect, you know? And as time goes on, it's like, hey, you know, I'm getting more creative. You know, mm-hmm. the properties are getting better. Um, so it's like, once I reach like that peak or that point where I feel like, you know, kind of like, man, I, see I forgot to add this, ask this question. Do you have like a niche for interior design now too? Yeah, so all of my properties I, did, I designed myself. Well, so like even the interior. In the interior, okay. Yeah, so I pick out all the tiles, I pick out all the cabinets, you know, I pick out all the countertops, you know, all the fixtures that go inside, you know, the kitchen and bathrooms, you know, I pick out. So. Got a little niche for interior design. I would more so say yes. Say yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like interior design yeah. as well. It's like fun. It's cool. Yeah. Cool. It shows personality. Well, this has been wonderful. Definitely helpful. We love on the Learn Without Show. We can have you know all different type of people come on, especially entrepreneurs. Um, I definitely think that real estate is something that people try to like stay away from because they feel like it's scary, right. um, especially with being an, a homeowner. Uh, you know, it's kind of like a big responsibility. But I think once people are knowledgeable about different things about it, it's not as it's not that yeah. stressful. Yeah. And listen, I've added up Those how much understanding I've added up how much I've given people in rent mm-hmm. since I moved out at 25. Mm-hmm. It's about time. Mm-hmm. You know, and you start adding that up, you like, dang, I may could have, you know, put something down. For something. No, not down for something. I could like be paid off by now. Mm-hmm. You figure you start giving people twelve hundred, two thousand in rent for you stay at a, a like I stayed at one you know place for about two years. Rent was twelve hundred. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Then you move somewhere else. You start it starts to really really add up when you could have made that investment into buying your own property. Yeah. All right, everybody, we are out. We will see you next week. And never forget, not all superheroes wear capes. Sometimes, Sometimes they, they wear, wear headphones. headphones. Peace. Peace.